Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and we're going to be doing a weekly wrap up. I am going to try to do this before the sun moves over and starts shining directly into my face and it gets even brighter than it already is. So right now when the leaves and the trees are in the right spot, no problem. And then when they move, big problem. So let's jump right in. First of all, for this week, I've finished six books, which is, that's the way it's going to start happening right now, because at the beginning of the month, I always start reading a lot of books, meaning that I read a little bit like one chapter or 20 pages or something of a book each day, and then they kind of all finish up at the same time, which I don't know why it happens like that. It just does. Sometimes they're library books and I schedule them like that because I want to be able to take them back to the library. So I need them to be finished in order to take them back. So let's just talk about what I read. First, I read Trickster's Choice. This is Tamara Pierce. It's also the first book in a duology about Alana's daughter. I was so excited to start reading this book. And then I started y'all and I was like, who is Alana? Like, I do not like her as a parent. And it kind of made me sad because I love Alana as a kid, but she's kind of an absentee parent. Like, she's not been there. She's been off fighting as the king's champion. And I get that. I get that that's what she wants to do, but it makes me feel bad for her kids. So anyway, we are following her daughter who says to her dad, George, George, the spy, right? She says, dad, I would like to be a spy. And George is like, absolutely not. Although we spend this whole book seeing her do things, spy-y things that her dad taught her. And I'm like, come on, George, you can't teach her to be a spy and give her all these tools and skills to be a spy and then say, oh, but don't go do that. So anyway, I loved it. I loved it that she was like, you know what? I'm going to go do this thing on my own. I'm going out. Now, things didn't work exactly the way she wanted them to. There may have been a kidnapping. There may have been a forced labor situation. But she did what we have come to learn all females from Tamara Pierce do. She persevered and she overcame the obstacles. And this was a feel-good, wonderful book with great characters. Next, I finished Rabbits for Food, which is, is one of my NPR books, and I thought this was going to actually have to do with rabbits. It's labeled Rabbits for Food, or titled Rabbits for Food, because the person telling the story is called Bunny. She says that's her real name. She actually gets very offended if people say, is your real name Bunny? So according to her, yes, her real name is Bunny. However, she was named that because her parents raised rabbits for food. What we found out about Bunny is that she's not exactly a reliable narrator, so who knows what's true and what's untrue. But we are tracking Bunny as she is having a mental breakdown. And so we go through kind of what leads up to this breakdown. Then from the moment of the breakdown, we go a little bit into the future. But she's writing what's happening to her in a creative writing class in the mental hospital that she's in. So... That is the premise of the whole book and what we're doing. And it leads up to what's happening. I did not like this. I didn't like the ending of it. I didn't like Bunny. Like, I didn't, there weren't very many characters that I could even root for. I semi even felt sorry for her husband, but I think I was supposed to feel a lot more sorry for him than I did. Like, the whole thing, I just did not really connect to a lot of people in this book, and I did not enjoy it. So, read at your own risk. The next book that I finished was Purity in Death by J.D. Robb. This one is another one of those that's going to stand out for me because so many things happened in this and I cannot talk about them without them being spoilers. I will just say that some of our tangential characters that have been circling around our Eve world um, may have come under some fire. This, this book and there was a terrorist, ter terrorist group calling themselves purity, and they are trying to purify things. So that's what this one was about, and it was fantastic. Okay, the next book that I finished was Tigana by Guy Gavril K. This is the second GGK book that I've read, and the I liked it a lot better than, than the first one that I read. This one is a standalone. We are following a group of people. They're not together at the beginning. They're just different people because they're this country has been completely destroyed. And what I mean by destroyed is like 
the memory of it has been wiped out of people's minds so that if you are talking to somebody, they can't even say the word. They don't even know the name of the country unless you happen to be from that country and part of that country. And then you can say the name of your country and the person that you just said it to will not hear what you have said and will not be able to say it back to you. So it is an erasing of a country and a culture and a community. And if you read this and you get to the back of it, there's actually an interview with the author where he is talking about how he was coming at this from that point of view of what happens when your identity as a people group is taken away from you. So it was very cool. The people that lived there and were from there certainly remembered what it was called, but they were so defeated and had been so scattered because of what happened with the giant battle and the people coming in and conquering them and kind of spreading them out that there just wasn't enough to even create any kind of uprising. There were so many spies. And so this was kind of like a coming home book for some people who had been little kids in their country and when the spread happened they didn't even remember they didn't remember the name of the country and once they were reminded they could hear it they could hear the word and they could remember being there as children and things started to just come back to them and so it was it was really good it was another I mean it just kind of also felt like a revenge kind of story like they're coming back to take over their place after they've been displaced by someone and so it it was also but it also had real emotions like one of the people had gone there to befriend the new leader in order to be able to kill them and this person actually actually befriended them and then was like well I can't kill him I actually like him so so there was just those kind of things that came up here like it was like a real People, real people, not just a feel-good, fake kind of everything works out fine in the end kind of book. So I really enjoyed it. Then I finished Getting His Game Back. This was an arc from NetGalley on, and I read it on my Kindle. I almost DNF'd this book, and I'm glad that I didn't. But it was just a, I'm going to say that it was an okay romance but a really good book that looked into mental health issues and also at the same time, a nice open communication discussion on interracial relationships. And this is coming from an author who herself is, is in an interracial relationship. And so I think she has a unique perspective in being able to speak into a book like this. And so I really liked the way she talked about it. I liked that there are discussion questions at the back of this book. Like it asks questions about what did you think about the gender norms in here and how those were a little bit reversed in certain areas. And what did you think about the discussions that the, the characters had about certain things? Did you like some of the side characters that was in that were in here? Like there were a lot. I really liked the discussion questions at the back. They really made me think about things in the book that I had just read after I finished it. So this was definitely a good book. And if you're looking for a romance that also has some dealings with Seasonal affective disorder, that is discussed in here. There's a diagnosis given in here. And it, I just, I liked it without having any connection to that. So I can't speak to that part of it. But I thought that it was handled in a good way. Okay, the last thing that I finished, and I just finished it yesterday, is Demon Theory by Stephen Graham Jones. This is a, oh, I have a physical copy. It's the only thing I have a physical copy of. This is a library book. It's also, I mean, it's pretty thick, but let me get back here to it. All of this right here, this whole back, probably, I don't know how many pages, 50, over 50 pages are just notes and footnotes. So, I mean, it has references to where it even says, as John Bon Jovi says. <laughs> 
So these notes in the back are sometimes really funny, but they discuss what we read in the rest of this book. This is a script for a movie. It's actually the script for three movies. This is a horror movie trilogy written down in book form. So he's done this with Last Final Girls, The Last Final Girl, and he's also done it here in Demon Theory. I enjoyed it this in here so much more. Now, I don't know if that's because I physically read this one and I listened to the other one on audio, but I could picture everything that was happening in here. I could see these characters. Now, what's the weird thing about this is that we're dealing with the same characters through all three of these movies. Even when we see them die in the first movie, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're in the same timeline, we're in the same place or whatever for the next book, next movie. So anyway, they keep coming back and it's not like they're coming back to life. That's not what I mean because it's not necessarily the same time or the same place. So anyway, this, it was so good. It's about a doctor who is writing down the story as he's being told it by one of his patients in the mental hospital where he works. And the patient that he is hearing from is in the stories, all three of the stories, and she is telling her experience. And so that's all I'm going to say. It is very unreliable. Like we're never sure who is who and what are they doing and why are they doing it and who they really are. But it was so good. And I highly recommend it if you're a Stephen Graham Jones fan. There's not, not a ton of gore in it, not like the least of my scars. And but there but there's of course there's death and there's blood and it's like a like a slasher movie trilogy so that is it that's everything that i read i know that was kind of long so i'm going to quickly go through what i'm still reading and what my plans are for the coming week so i am still reading waking or some minor by helen rye peterson i will be finished with that this week i only have 3 days left i only have 3 chapters left and i am loving it I am reading City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I will not be finished with that this week. I'm reading one chapter a day. That's going to take me a while. I am reading MS-13 by Stephen Dudley. This was one of my NPR books for the month, and I will probably finish it by next week. I'll probably finish it tomorrow, so that one will be done. And I'm reading From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I started this last night with the 24-hour readathon kickoff, and I'm going to try to finish it today. 24 hours. We'll see. It's a really long book. I'm not sure that I can finish. I'm not even halfway done yet I have 12 hours left <laughs> okay then what's coming up next I will be reading Portrait in Death and Imitation in Death by J.D. Robb I'm not going to read them back to back but maybe I can get to both of them in the next week I will be going out of town and so we will see my video will be up next week but it might look a little different because I'm gonna have to record it all on the phone so we'll see how that goes then I have the fantasy book, one more of my fantasy books, called The Book of Three by Lloyd Alexander, and I really want to get that one going, so we will see if I can finish that one, or if I can finish something else and get to that one. So we'll see. That's all I'm going to talk about. There are plenty more on my list that hopefully I will get to. I am running a little bit behind so far this month, but... Like I said, I'm about to go on a trip. It's about a 10 hour drive there and a 10 hour drive back. So plenty, plenty of time for me to get in some good audiobooks during that drive. So I think that's gonna do it for today. Let me know what you're reading this week or what you finished this week and what you rated it, I would like to know. That is gonna do it for me. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.